In this video, we're going to be talking about free response question number three. So this problem says, let f be a differentiable function with f of four equal to three. On the interval, zero is less than or equal to x, is less than or equal to seven. The graph of f prime, the derivative of f, consists of a semicircle with two line segments as shown in the figure above. In the first problem, we're being asked to find f of zero and f of five. So we can use the fact that we're given f of four to sort of work forwards and backwards to find f of zero and f of five, okay? So remember that the integral of f prime would be f. So we can use the area under f prime to move back to f of zero. We have f of four is equal to three, cool. We can find f of zero by starting at f of four and subtracting this area under the curve from zero to four of f prime of x, okay? And so what this looks like is basically, we're gonna say f of zero is equal to f of four, so that's three, minus area of circle is equal to pi r squared, and it looks like the radius of this circle would be two, so you would have pi two squared, which is four pi, Right? But then notice that this is only half of our circle. We don't have this upper half as well. So we're actually going to be dividing our two pi by two to get the area under the curve at that point. And then since it's below our x axis, it would actually be minus two pi. So our answer for f of zero would be three plus two pi, all right? And now let's see if we can figure out f of five. So we use that same concept, but with looking ahead, so f of four plus the integral from four to five of f prime of x dx. And this is just going to be this little triangle. The area of a triangle is one and a half base times height. Our base is one, our height is one, so that would be one half times one times one, which is just one half. So we would get that f of five is equal to three plus that area of the triangle, which is one half. So this would just be three and a half. And that is the answer to part A. All right, and then moving on to part B, we have find the x-coordinates of all points of inflection of the graph of f for zero is less than x is less than seven. Justify your answer. Okay, cool, so with this question, let me go ahead and erase this stuff. Remember that points of inflection are where points of inflection happen where f double prime of x is equal to zero or undefined. So the points at which f double prime of x is equal to zero or undefined would be at two, four, and six, right? You can tell here, derivative here would be zero. The derivative of four would be undefined since it's sort of this weird combination of the semicircle and the line. And then the derivative at x equals six would be undefined as well because it's on that cusp. So let's go ahead and evaluate each of these. So not only does f prime of x need to be equal or undefined, but also f prime of x needs to change from decreasing to increasing or increasing to decreasing. So at this point, you can see clearly it's changing from decreasing to increasing. Um, at four, unfortunately, it looks like it's it goes from increasing to increasing, so it doesn't change sides. So we can't say that that is an actual point of inflection. And then if we look at x equals six, we can see it's increasing to decreasing, so this would also be a point of inflection. So we would say f has an inflection point at x equals two and x equals six because f double prime of x is equal to zero or undefined at those points and changes signs. So both of these are super important. Notice how x equals four, it was undefined at that point, 
the second derivative was undefined at that point, but it didn't change sign, so that wouldn't have been a point of inflection for the original function. All right, next problem. Let g be the function defined by g of x is equal to f of x minus x. On what intervals of any is g decreasing for uh, 0 is less than x is less than 7? Show the analysis that leads to your answer. We have this new function being introduced, g, and it's equal to f of x minus x. So if we want to find where it's decreasing, it sounds like we're probably going to want to take the derivative of it. We're going to say g prime of x is equal to f of x minus derivative of x, just one, lucky for us. So now we have it sort of in a format we can work with because we have the graph of f of x in front of us. We know that g is going to be decreasing whenever the derivative is less than zero. So we can kind of rewrite that as when f of x minus one is less than zero. So when, so when f of x is less than one, all right? So where does that happen within our function? It seems like it happens here and then up until five, it happens as well. So at these points, g will be decreasing because of this expression that we've set up. So we would say that it is decreasing between zero and five because f prime of x is less than one for those values. So we just use the derivative to figure out where g would be decreasing. Next problem. For the function g defined in part c, find the absolute minimum on the interval zero is less than x is less than seven, justify your answer. So it sounds like we are going to want to use the candidate test here. So remember, we're using the first derivative test to figure out the critical points of the function. And then we're also not only just using the critical points, we're using the ends of the domain. So that would be 0 and 7. With our first derivative test, what that means is we take the derivative of g of x. So we've already sort of defined that in the last problem. The derivative of g of x is f of x minus 1. We want to set that equal to 0 to find where we have critical points. So 0 is equal to f of x minus 1. So we're trying to actually find where f of x, add 1 to the other side, is equal to 1. That will be a critical point. So if we go up to our graph, it looks like that happens at x equals 5. So that is going to be a critical point, and it looks like that's our only critical point. And then we also want to evaluate it at the ends of the domain, so 0 and 7. 0, 5, and 7 is our x's. x's. And then g of x. We're going to evaluate each one of these. So g of x is equal to f of x minus x. So in this case, it would be f of 0 minus 0. We already found out what f of 0 is from part a. So we can really just say 3 plus 2 pi, and then x is equal to 0. So it would effectively just be 3 plus 2 pi. Uh, then f of 5 minus 5. Once again, we found this in part a. So 3.5 minus 5, so this is equal to minus 1.5. f of 7, we haven't actually figured that out yet, so we're going to have to find that out using that same concept we use in part a. So f of 7 is equal to f of 4 plus the interval from 4 to 7 of f prime of x dx. So let's go back up to our equation and see what the area under the curve from 4 to 7 is. So I can see that I can break this up to sort of a couple shapes. So we've got one triangle here on the left. It's got a base of 2, a height of 2, area of a triangle is equal to 1 half base times height. So this triangle would be 1 half times 2 times 2, which is equal to 2. Then we have this square down here with a height of 1 and a width of 1. So that's just 1. 1 times 1 is 1. And then we have this other triangle here that has a base of 1 and a height of 1. So that would be 1 half. So 
we add all of that together to get the area under the curve from four to seven, which would be two plus one plus one and a half. So that would be three and a half. So um, f of four is still three, and then we're adding three and a half from the area of the curve that we had. So f of seven is six and a half. All right. So going back to g of x, we'd say f of seven minus our x here is gonna be seven. So we get six and a half minus seven is equal to minus 0 0.5. So next comes comparing all the values that we got from our candidates test. So we're comparing the values 3 plus 2 pi, minus 1.5, and minus 0 0.5, and we're trying to find the absolute minimum value. So it looks like in this case that would be this minus 1.5 because that is the smallest value out of all of the candidates. So hopefully that should help you with this AP Calc problem. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll get back to you, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.